If you look at this pear tree from a distance, you might not notice that it has any major problems. But when we get a little bit closer, we can start to see that some of the leaves and fruits have unusual blemishes and structures. This disease on this ornamental pear is a rust disease. And I don't know exactly which rust it is. There's about four possibilities. It could be cedar hawthorn rust, cedar apple rust, uh, Asian pear rust, or cedar quince rust. It's really hard to distinguish them on this broadleaf host. So what is this rust disease and is it a problem? Uh, what it is, is back in March or April, there were spores that blew onto these leaves and fruits and started these little infections. And probably didn't notice them. Over time, they've gotten bigger and bigger. And by the time we reach the end of June and into July, we start, it, it starts to become a lot more obvious because this fungus is pretty much done with what it's going to do on this tree. And so it will start to produce these under the underside of the leaf or on the surface of the fruits, sort of a little bump or pustule. And then it's going to, from that little pustule, that erupted area, you'll start to see these little white projections or tubes. And that is where the spores of this gymnosporangium species are going to tumble out and blow to a different plant. So in order for this fungus to complete its life cycle, it survives part of the time on a plant in the Rosaceae family, in this case the pear, and part of its time on plants in, that are in, a, in Oklahoma, it's usually junipers. So juniperous species like Eastern Red Cedar. And at that time, it'll make some kind of orange structure or goo or swelling on those juniperus that are going to blow and infect the broadleaf host. So in, it could be a pear, an apple, a quince. Um, so if you don't like how this looks, there's nothing you can do about it this year. But next spring, when this tree or other plants in your landscape in the Rosaceae family start to produce leaves and flowers, that would be the time to apply a preventative fungicide application. And if we have a rainy spring, you may have to make two, three applications of that fung fungicide about 10 days apart in order to prevent all these blemishes from developing later in the summer. So overall, I don't really think this disease poses much of a threat for the health of this tree. Yeah, there's some blemishes on the leaves, but we don't see a lot of leaf drop or dieback or decline as a result. It's mostly healthy, and so it's just more if you find it visually unappealing. Now, if you have an edible pear or an apple and your fruits like look like this, they're not gonna look very appetizing. And so for those edible fruits, you may want to apply fungicides to prevent this sort of damage from happening to those fruits. If you are worried about the disease on the juniper host, again, it's not usually a major health threat. It's more cosmetic. There may be a couple of weeks where your ornamental juniper doesn't look that pretty because it has the orange gooey substance. And this would be the time when you're seeing this fungus release spores to treat those juniperous species. So how do I know if I'm, it's releasing spores? I can pluck off some of the leaves or fruits, tap them on something white, a paper towel, a Kleenex, and see if spores are coming out. Then that's the right time to make sure that we're treating those conifer hosts if you're concerned about the blemishes there. So for more information, we have a fact sheet and also a pest alert that you can read more about the life cycle of these unusual fungi. hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Music